Good morning. I welcome you all in the wonderful and blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray this morning that as we gather in His name, that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will bless us with His presence and that He will transform us with His love. What is it about Godet Sunday that we should have a different colour on the Advent week? Entering the Advent season, we are called to place to a place of preparation and penance in order to receive our Lord. The Christmas violet that you see on the wreath reminds us of the work to be done in that anticipation. We look inward, we reflect on all the things that we have placed under our roofs that might make us unworthy of the Lord's entrance. But why? In the middle of the season of waiting, is there a rose-coloured or red candle? Godet Sunday reminds us that amidst this time of preparation, we must not lose sight of the one we are preparing for. Godet means to rejoice. Joy is something that cannot be contained. It is something that radiates outward and sticks out like a red colored candle. All four of the Gospels speak of this great figure, John the Baptist, who is the one who has prepared the way for Jesus. John must have been familiar with our first reading from Isaiah. The crown of everlasting joy amongst the backdrop of a desert and parched land. John knew that he was preparing the way for the one who would save us. This knowledge was made apparent when he told his followers to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus' response was a confirmation of the signs that many were looking for, especially John. What stands out in the Gospel is the very last part where, where Jesus declares that there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Is this an insult to John? Certainly not. Jesus here is sharing in the joy of the kingdom of heaven. And with that he shares the key to that joy himself. The, this Godet Sunday, the purpose of John the Baptist's preparation is fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The one whose way was prepared is now here to walk it. Over 2,000 years later, we still light this red colored candle in order to remind us of the joy we have 
in Jesus. Even though we are still, even though we still experience the troubles and turmoils in our lives similar to that Isaiah speaks of, we must not forget that our faith, hope, joy, and peace are all fulfilled in Jesus, and that we are all called to live in union with Him every day of our lives. And by doing so, we live in the kingdom and can do things greater than He. As we reflect on Advent, let us stand and sing together our opening hymn, Church of God, Elect and Glorious.
of your wonderful love for us in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are sovereign of the whole earth, this whole universe. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much that you sent your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, for us. And so, Father, we now come into your presence and pray, Lord, forgive us for all sin which we have committed in word, deed, and thought. For, Father, we feel so unworthy to be in your presence. But yet, Lord, we are reminded of your great love for us. That for when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so, Father, may we be cleansed this morning through the blood of Christ. And may we be found pure and holy in your presence. Lord, may we know that this morning we stand before you not in our own righteousness, but that we stand before you in the righteousness of Christ. And Lord, indeed, now we pray that through the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, that you may descend upon our time of worship. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you may transform us as we worship God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to worship God through our hymns and songs of praise and worship. This is the day. This is the day.
explicit. This morning I just have a few intimations. Firstly, um, this coming Saturday will be um, the Litsecha outreach. Um, and over will take place on the 18th of December um, at about 10 o'clock. And he says she'll be available at the church between 10 and 10.45 a.m. So if you would like to bring some goodies for the children, uh, that is when Mandy will be available. And once again, thank you for supporting and donating to such a worthy cause. Secondly, this is just a reminder of the December, January services. Um, next week, rather than, uh, I've got the wrong slide here. <laughs> uh, the 19th of December, can you just go down? The 19th of December, uh, which is next week, is the carol service or invited to join, 9.30 a.m. Uh, then, of course, we will have our Christmas Day service at half past seven. If you are a late sleeper, please put your alarm on about an hour earlier than you normally do for a Sunday. <laughs> at 7.30 on Christmas Day, there will be no service on the 26th of December. And then again, you will have a combined service on the 2nd of January at 9.30 here in the chapel. And then just a reminder again that the Christmas Day service is at 7.30 in the morning. And then the church office will be closed from the 16th of December to the 10th of January. If there is any urgent matters, feel free to contact me. And then um, this morning, I just want to ask Sir Lomi to come forward. Sir Lomi, can you work or? Misschien ken die mense jou nie. This morning, um, to, to, to bid farewell, to say goodbye is, is never easy. So, Mummy, you're not busy, are you so? One of you. 26. Okay. So, Mummy has faithfully worked here for 26 years. And, uh, what's going to um, and yeah, this at the end of December, she has decided she is going to go on pension. And uh, I just thought I'd ask her to come forward this morning. Just to thank her. She has a prompt open to talk to and let Dante to say. So I'll be after that. Also, you miss. And uh, yeah, I'm just lying down for Everybody is thankful. Just a random applause. Was it good so far? I think it's not a good thing here. Well, it's not a good thing here. But don't do that. Don't do all the other bad things. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Let us pray. Mighty God, we just thank you for this opportunity to worship God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you are a faithful God, that you are a God who loves us, that you are a God who gives us good things. We thank you, Lord, that when life seems somewhat topsy-turvy, 
Sometimes when the horizon seems dark, even when there seems to be no hope in our hearts, we are thankful, Almighty God, that we can put our faith, hope, and trust in you. Thank you, Lord, that in Christ we have a Savior. Thank you, Lord, that in Christ we have hope. And indeed, Lord, we do thank you for the many years of service of Salome. Thank you for giving her the opportunity to, to work for our congregation. And we pray now that you will be with her as she retires and goes on pension. Be with her and her family, and we just pray, Lord, that you will continue to be a blessing. Lord, too, we are in that time of Advent. We are in that time where we are counting down to Christmas Day. We also know, Lord, that it is a time when many people have gone away, where they are travelling down to the coast or to various destinations. And so, Lord, in Jesus' name, we just pray for traveling mercies upon all people. For we know that we have bad accidents and fatalities in this nation. So we just pray at this time, Lord, grant safety and grant mercy. O oh Lord, too, we sit again with the coronavirus a new variant and where we read each day of how the numbers are rising. But yet, Almighty God, we know that you are faithful, that you are Je Jehovah Rapha, our God that heals. And so, Lord, we just pray, take away fear from people's hearts. And Lord, may you bring a decrease in number and may you bring healing. And Lord, I pray not only for those who may have COVID, I pray for those who may have other diseases, who may have the flu. And Father, may your grace and healing be upon them. Lord, too, we know that at this Christmas time that many people have bad depression and that suicides are on the increase. So, Father, at this time, we pray for those who feel that they are in a deep, deep hole, a deep, deep, dark hole. Oh, Father, may the light of Christ shine within them, and we pray, give them hope, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray, too, for your church at this time. Oh, Father, we pray for revival in the church, that we may truly be salt and light. Lord, that in these times that we may bring hope, the hope of Jesus. And Lord, I just pray for our congregation. Lord, be with us at all times. Be with those who need your grace and presence. And Father, guide and lead us as we continue to seek you. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Please remain seated as we sing together our invocation of the Spirit.
This morning scripture reading comes from the Old Testament, comes from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Let us hear the word of God. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, O a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt you over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold that, behold at that time I will deal with all your oppressors and I will save the lame and gather the outcast and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in at the time when I gather you together for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes says the Lord. May God bless to us reading of his word in the name of God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for your word. Thank you Lord that your word brings life and hope. And we now pray that as the word is preached, Lord, that it may speak into our hearts and that it may transform our hearts. In Jesus' name. The word Advent means coming, and in the season of Advent, the church looks forward to the coming of the Lord. Knowing that an authority figure is coming has the potential to incite one, to, to incite one of two reactions, fear or joy, fear or joy. When you're a child and you hear the garage door going up, you have a very different reaction if mom says, Hey, dad's home. Versus, just you wait. Now dad's home. If your boss tells you that he wants to see you in his office right before quitting time on Friday, your reaction will depend on whether you're expecting a promotion in the company or the company has begun a round of layoffs. When you see flashing red and blue lights on the highway, how do you react? Depends on whether you need help slowing down or help getting out of a ditch. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. Is our natural reaction fear or joy? It's not even close, is it? The Lord knows who we are and what we have done. How could we not be afraid? If we could travel back to the time of Zephaniah, we would run into an entire nation who had every reason to fear the Lord's coming. After God had given Israel the promised land, He warned them repeatedly that if they turned away from Him, He would uproot them from the land and turn them into the laughing stock of the world. 2 Chronicles 7, 19-22 While Judah failed to listen, 
and failed to obey and had turned from the true God to false gods. Idols like Baal and Moloch, whose worship practices included religious prostitution and child sacrifice. They scoffed at the prophets God sent to warn them to change their wicked ways and proudly boasted that God would be able to do nothing against them, either good or bad. And like hardened atheists, they made their wealth, real estate and business into their gods. And so for two-thirds of his book, the only message Zephaniah has is one of judgment. But in the, closing set, in the closing section of this book, the Zephaniah's message takes a very unexpected turn. To the faithful believers, those who took the Lord's warnings seriously and repented of their sins, the Lord offers a message of pure, unadulterated joy. Joy instead of judgment. That is the gist of what Zephaniah has to tell us today. Joy instead of judgment. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. That sounds similar to the holy jolly music we hear on the radio these days, right? Do you see the problem though? Those four words, sing, shout aloud, be glad and rejoice, are all commands. Why on earth would God have to command us to rejoice during the most wonderful time of the year. Why do morning shows and healthy professionals have to issue suggestions for dealing with holiday related stress and depression? This is the time of the year when we have the worst cases of depression and suicide. Why has it become trendy to skip Christmas altogether and to take a holiday instead. There are several reasons. For one, God has written His law in our hearts and put a conscience in our heads that reminds us every time we don't measure up. We know that we rightly deserve judgment, not joy from God. Second, we often search for joy in all the wrong places. More than any other time of the year, hidden idols are exposed, alcohol and excess, decorations and gifts, vacations and family and friends. While these things are gifts of God, they are not God. If we seek happiness and joy from anyone or anything other than God, we are in fact worshipping an idol. And when they take the place of the giver, they do not bring true joy. If you doubt that, wait for December 26th. See the trees lining the curb, the return lines at the stores, the grumpy hungover people at work. Listen for the complaints about family and friends. Notice how many people dig themselves into debt for just one day or a two of holiday cheer. If you're looking for joy in the gifts rather than the giver, then the command to rejoice is first a command to repent. To turn your heart away from the artificial sources of joy. And turn to God. Lastly, there, there is a little part of each of us that thinks the good news of Christmas is just too good to be true. We are constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop. For the lawyer to
to read the fine print to find out that there are strings attached because nothing in this world is free by nature we simply cannot grasp that forgiveness and peace and joy are free and unconditional gifts God gives to us no matter how many times we've heard the angels announcement that today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you we still think no way that's too good to be true and do you know what all three reasons have do you know what all three reasons have in common they crush our joy because they place our focus on us and our earthly situation instead where our focus should be at Christmas on the Lord and what he has done for us that's why it's so important that we make the Lord the center of our Christmas celebration because when our joy is in the Lord then it won't matter if our home looks like something out of a Hallmark movie if we can afford the best and shiniest gifts if there's an empty place for table in our hearts if failing health or financial stress or a family conflict cast a shadow over the celebration we will be filled with the joy with joy regardless of the outward circumstances you see God's joy is not dependent on what happens around us God's joy is because he loves us he died for us and he lives within us because the Lord has taken away your punishment he has turned back your enemy the Lord the King of Israel is with you never again will you fear any harm let's be blunt the best the world can offer is a brief reprieve from a reality a momentary illusion that life isn't short and hard and painful but the Lord confronts reality head-on and sweeps the ugliest away forever starting with the reality of the punishment we deserve make no mistake we have earned God's judgment but the Lord has taken it away not arbitrarily not like the police officer who says well it's Christmas time I'll let you go with the warning today no God redirected our punishment to his son God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 so that now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus Romans 8 verse 1 God will never punish you for your sins because he has punished Jesus in your place if that's not a reason to rejoice then there is no reason to ever rejoice and the gifts just keep on coming he has turned back your enemy by suffering God's wrath in our place Jesus has crushed death and the devil they are defanged powerless in this year I've probably done or have than the most funerals I have ever done and the number of the funerals I do are people who do not go to church in some cases they don't want anything to do with God but I take the opportunity to preach the gospel I take the opportunity to tell them that you may be right here feeling hopeless and feeling like there is no tomorrow feeling that there is nothing and I remind them of what Jesus has done for us and I remind them of the I remind them of the resurrection I remind them that God gives life that yes the door to this reality may close but through death door God opens a new door a door to be with him in eternity and all we have to do 
is repent and believe. <laughs> it sounds so simple. It actually sounds too good to be true. <laughs> but yet that is what Jesus has done for us. That is what stands in the Bible. And the gifts just keep coming on. And now because the Lord, the King of Israel, is with us, we are never alone. He is always with us, guiding and guarding our lives, so that we no longer need to fear evil. Whether it is the evil of sickness or poverty or hardship or pain or loneliness or death, none of them can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you don't believe me, go and read Romans chapter 8 verse 39 that tells us that. That nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God. Even as the days grow shorter and the shadow of death looms larger, we find our joy in the Lord. For instead of the judgment we deserve, He has given us the joy of salvation. And while our joy centers on what God has done for us, listen to where the Lord finds His joy. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not lift up your hands. Then let not your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will... Take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Oh, our joy is in what the Lord has done for us. But the Lord's joy is in us. Isn't that amazing? Again, Zephaniah speaks to a simple tendency we have. Our tendency to be afraid to come into God's presence. Whether on the day of His return in glory or even here in worship. We, don't, we know that God is present. We even begin worship by invoking His name. But don't we often feel like Isaiah? Woe to me, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King the Lord Almighty. Isaiah 6 verse 5. And that fear is paralyzing. Not only does it rob us of joy, not only, not only does it hinder our energy and enthusiasm in, in carrying out the work God has given us, but sometimes it keeps us from worshipping, praying, studying scripture altogether. Certainly when the Lord comes in judgment, He will burn up unbelievers with the unquenchable fire of hell. Luke 3.17 But that's not why He comes to us now. Just as Jesus did not come on Christmas to bring judgment, but salvation. So He comes to us here, not to scold us for our sins, but to take them away. When we're here, we're not the only one singing. God is singing over us. The Bible says that there is rejoicing in heaven over, our, over one sinner who repents. Luke 15 verse 10. God rejoices in our repentance because He is not like us. Who often only gradually give our forgiveness. He takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that they turn from their ways and live. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. Nowhere is God's joy more evident than in the sacraments. In baptism, He takes a helpless little sinner, and instead of casting him or her away as he or she deserves, He washes away all their sin and makes him or her His child. In Holy Communion, the Lord invites the weary, the downtrodden, the desperate, the despairing, 
sinners like you and me to come to his table to receive his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins and the assurance of salvation. Don't walk up here filled with shame or guilt as if God is hovering with his arms crossed with the look that says, Oh no, not you again. You need my forgiveness again, do you? When will you ever learn? No, he doesn't do that, my friends. But he wants you to come up here with joy. Because nothing gives the Lord greater joy than forgiving your sins. Let's close with Zephaniah's beautiful description of Christmas. He will quiet you with his love. Isn't that an amazing picture? Especially when the stress and expectations and busyness and commercializations of these days threaten to kill our joy. It's amazing because it's really real. When a baby wakes up in the middle of the night screaming, what does a parent do? Scream back? Shut up? I'm trying to sleep here? Issue a threat? If you don't stop crying now, I'll give you something really to cry about. No. The parent takes the baby in his arms and, John, and gently rocks her, sings to her, speaks to her, assuring her of his love. That's what God does for us on Christmas. He comes as a tiny baby to take away our fear, to quiet our anxious hearts, to assure us of his tender love. God's attitude towards us is like a grandparent at Christmas. You love your children and grandchildren dearly, despite what they've done, in spite of their failings and the times they have forgotten all about you. You still want to heal their wounds and dry their tears and calm their fears. You want to give them joy and peace. The very best you can offer. And even though you may not always be able to, God in Christ always does. Nothing gives Him greater joy than seeing His children joyfully receiving the gifts He freely gives. Just like the gifts of hope and peace that Jesus brings us this Advent season, His gift of joy is unexpected. When we hear that He is coming, we tend to be fearful because we know we deserve judgment. Today, through Zephaniah, the Lord has taken away our fear with the promise that He comes to give us and to give us joy instead of judgment. This isn't like the artificial worldly joy that, that, longs, that, longs, that goes up to about the 26th of December. But this is a joy, the joy of the Lord. And the joy He has in us lasts for all eternity. If it doesn't bring you joy this Christmas, then truly nothing will. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty God, we just praise and thank you that at this Advent time, that at Christmas, on a Christmas day, Lord, that you bring to us joy, not judgment. Thank you, Lord, that in Christ, that you have brought us the greatest gift of all, your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, may we recognize this day that you have not brought us condemnation, but that you have brought us salvation and freedom. And Father, may we make good use of this opportunity. May we, Lord, indeed be filled with joy, hope and strength. And indeed, Lord, thank you for all you do. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. And Lord, and an appreciation for your goodness and grace to us. We give to you our tithes, gifts and offerings. 
as we put them into the bag as we walk out or as we put it into the church account. Lord, we thank you for your generosity and grace to us each and every day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Grace and peace to you from Him who is and who was and who is to come. From the Holy Spirit before His throne. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness. The firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Jesus invites to his table all who are tired and weary. He prepares this table for you in the presence of your enemies. He wants us to know that he is our host and that he gives himself to us. Let us lay aside the cares of this world, for now we are to be received by the King, by the King of all. As the Lord Jesus on the night he was handed over to bread, and so I take these elements of bread and of wine to be set apart from all common use to his holy use to serve his supper. And as he gave thanks and blessed, let us now near to God and offer our prayers and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Father, it is our greatest joy to bless you, to praise you, to thank you and to worship you in every place where your glory resides. For great is the majesty of your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever-living and ever-merciful God. You created us of nothing and raised us up when we fell. You left nothing undone until you led us to heaven and lavished on us your future kingdom. For all these blessings we thank you. <coughs> holy Father, you are holy and most holy. You and your only Son and your Holy Spirit. You so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord Jesus, Remembering all you did for us, the gifts at the supper, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at your right hand, and that you will come again in glory. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, Lord our God. O oh God, pour out your Spirit upon us and upon these gifts. May this bread and cup be for us the precious body and blood of your Christ, that we who partake of them may not come to judgment, but may find the paradise of your presence, the forgiveness of sins, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the treasures of the kingdom of heaven. 
with one voice and one burning heart, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We acclaim you, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, we worship you, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, attend to the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks and praise, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. The body of Christ, given. blood of Christ shed for me. Brothers and sisters, come forward and enjoy the body and blood.
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Let's stand and sing together our closing hymn of Amazing Grace, our sweet Son.
even those who pierced him. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.